Francis Ellen Kemble was born in 1809 in London. She was a child of one of the most famous theater families in England. Always called Fanny, she grew up in a household where she often visited and was visited by famous actors from home and abroad. Fanny was a supercharged teen, be beginning li a lifelong habit of drama, reading, writing poems, and great love of Shakespeare. Her father, actor Charles Kemble, managed the huge Covent Garden Theater. Take off the hearing aid. Take your mask off. Oh, I'm told I, I could take this off. I forgot. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, his, her, her dad managed the Covent Garden Theater. In 1828, prepared by him and only 20 years old, Fanny made her debut at her father's theater playing the role of Shakespeare's Juliet. All of London, rich and poor, old and young, made her an overnight sensation. They could not get enough of her. After playing virtually every city in Britain, she made a fortune for her less and less well-off family. Three years later, she sailed to America with her father. Leaving was a bitter decision for her. She hated the idea of leaving England for a new country. But New York gave her another tremendously successful debut. She traveled to every big city um, with her father Charles, a great Kemble family actor. But he was not well, and he sailed home to London, leaving Fanny to a life of many transatlantic crossings from her adopted home and back to England. Of her many passionate admirers, one was Pierce Butler, a wealthy Philadelphian who followed her very persistently, showering her with flowers and gifts. She fell in love with him, and in 1842, they were married by Bishop William White in Christ Church. They were both attending the First Unitarian Church of Philadelphia, where they heard the fiery abolitionist sermons given by the controversial minister, William Henry Furness. Pierce Butler was a slaver whose family were longtime church members. He sat in the front row opposite Dr. Furness. Fanny's English family had long been opposed to slavery. For all her days in, as an Englishwoman, her beliefs so opposed to her husband's eventually caused the separation of Fanny and, P and Pierce. Their final divorce is a long story. Suffice it to say, that, to say that in the 18th century, the law gave her, gave to her husband, excuse me, total power over her life, her money, and two infant children. Obtaining a, a divorce took difficult years for, for Fanny. For Fanny. <clears throat> Learning that her husband owned large plantations and hundreds of slaves in the eastern islands of Georgia, Fanny desired to see Butler and, to see Butler and St. Simon's Island, where more than 400 slaves were owned by Pierce Butler. Her visit motivated her greatest work, the Journal of a Residence on a Georgia Plantation in 1838-1839. It was held back from publication until 1863, late in the Civil War. Like her two earlier successes in London and New York, the book was widely read and influential. It tells intimately of the months Fanny lived on the plantations with her two infant children and a nanny. After a harrowing trip south by rail and carriage, the moment arrived when she was surrounded by black slaves thrilled to see her, the child of their master. She wrote of staying in a poorly built house with her two children and poor clothing, furnishing, food, and bedding 
for her family, often sent by her. Pierce stayed in a room next door. Compared with, the butler's, compared with the butler's relative luxury, hundreds of slave shacks were lived in by slaves owned by Butler and his brutish overseers. The slaves were heavily lashed for failure to do hours working in the fields, while Fanny was given her own slave, Jack, who became her friend, accompanying her on daily explorations of the woods. As at home, she rode a fine horse and wrote prolifically of the lovely flowers and the big snakes that she saw. Slave mothers asked Fanny, Mrs. Get me mate, tell Massa I can't go to the field, I'm sick. Often women had as many as a dozen children, babies, and yet three weeks after giving birth, they faced a lash which drove them back to field work. Fanny wrote, Mr. Butler was called out this evening to listen to a complaint of overwork from a gang of pregnant women. I did not stay to listen to the details of their petition, for I'm unable to command, them, to command myself on such occasions, so am I. And Mr. Butler seemed positively degraded in my eyes as he stood enforcing upon these women the necessity of their fulfilling their appoint appointed tasks. How honorable he would have appeared to me begrimed with the sweat and, and soil of the coarsest manual labor to what he then seemed, setting forth these wretched, ignorant women as a duty, I'm sorry, as duty their unpaid extracted labor. I turned away in bitter disgust. I hope this sojourn among Mr. Butler's slaves may not lessen my respect for him, but I fear it, for the details of slaveholding are so unmanly, let alone every other consideration, that I know not how anyone with the spirit of a man can condescend to them. Rice was a hugely profitable plantation crop. Many slaves carried from West Africa on crowded ships brought their expert rice growing skills from Africa to the plantation fields. Living in shacks of poverty, caring as best they could, year after year, they, ra they, uh, they raised more rice, more children, to keep the rice profits flowing to their rich owners. It was illegal to teach reading. On punishment of vicious strokes of the lash, some did learn. Attendance at services was relished by those who read the Bible. This was important to Fanny, whose daily reading included the Bible. Her stay on the plantations, seeing her husband mistreating his slaves, showed her that she and Butler must part. After years of legal wrangling, Mrs. Butler at last took back her name and was called Fanny Kemble again for the rest of her life. Meanwhile, Pierce Butler had become known in Philadelphia as a philanderer and dualist and completely dissipated his fortune. To regain his wealth, Butler held the largest slave sale ever held in America in 1857. Called the Weeping Time, 450 human beings were torn from their families and sold at a racetrack near Savannah, many never seeing relatives again. Rain fell constantly for the two days of the weeping time. During the years toward their divorce, Kemble and Butler communicated only in letters carried by William Henry Furness, their pastor. They became close friends with the Furnaces and other well-known visitors to their house seven miles north of Philadelphia. Once Fanny brought a basket of flowers and cucumbers to Mrs. Furness. One of their wonderful and close friends was William Ellery Channing, 
one of the great early leaders of the Unitarian Church. Ralph Walder Emerson was like, like an uncle to their children. As she became older, she gave very popular readings of her many favorite Shakespeare plays again. In 1873, she and Henry James became fast friends and traveled Europe and America together. He was with her to the end. Fanny died in 1893 and is buried in Kensal Green Cemetery in London. Hi, I'm Reverend Hannah Capaldi. And I'm Reverend Abby Tennis. We are the ministers at the First Unitarian Church of Philadelphia, where our mission is to awaken love and justice in our lives and in the world. We're so grateful that you watched, and we hope that the sermon connected with your soul. We also want to invite you to join us for a live worship service every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You can always find the link to that service on our website at www.philauu.org. In these services, you'll hear words like you've just heard, and you also get a chance to greet one another, pray together, sing together, and we even hold a virtual coffee hour after services to get a chance to greet some new and old friends. If you want to support the mission of this community and you feel moved to give, you can do so by going to the website that Reverend Abby just mentioned. You can find that link below, or you can text 215-709 5095 and follow the prompts to give. If someone in your life needs to hear these words today, we encourage you to share this video. And again, thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you soon.